In this video, I want to go over uh, how to find the intercept turning point and point of inflection using calculus. And then we are going to sketch it. And then I'm going to show you how you can use a table menu to confirm your answers. Okay, so that will give you a clear understanding of these vital information. So the first thing is, let's find the intercepts. If they're saying intercept, they are asking you to find the x and the y intercept. So I hope you understand the y intercept is when x is equal to 0. The y intercept is when x is equal to 0. And if you put x is equal to 0 in this equation, I hope you directly understand when x is 0, your y is going to be 32 or negative 32. Okay, so this is your y intercept. So somewhere here, this is minus 32. Now to find the x intercept, to find the x-intercept, you have to find, you have to set or let y is equal to 0. So what they have done is they have factorized this. And they have used the factor theorem to factorize this. So if I put y is equal to 0 here, so y is equal to 0 is equal to x minus 2, the whole cube, minus 6 times x minus 2, the whole squared. Okay, so 0 is equal to, you can factor out x minus 2, the whole squared. So if you factor out x minus 2 squared from here, you have x minus 2 from this uh, first term, and then you go to minus 6 here. <laughs> Hopefully this should not be difficult, so this is x minus 2 times x minus 8. And if you set each of them equal to 0, you can say x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 6. So you can see the two intercepts, the x-intercepts are 2, comma 0, and 6, comma 0. Okay. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake here. This is, oops, this is, at times it's always good to slow down. So it should be minus 8. So this is x is equal to 8. So the two x intercepts is uh, 2, 0, and 8, 0. So this is the one x intercept, and this is the other x intercept. OK, so now let me copy this. I want this. Uh, copy. Let me paste it here. OK. Uh, so I didn't copy the whole thing. So y is equal to x cubed, missed out x cubed. So let me write that down. So y is equal to x cubed. Now we have to find the first derivative and the second derivative. So let me first differentiate both, uh, do the derivative first. So d, dy by dx is 3x squared minus uh, 24x plus 36. So what can you factor out? I can factor out a 3. So that is same as x squared minus 12x mm, minus 12x. Am I right? No. Uh, this is minus 8x. I'm dividing the whole thing by 3 or factoring out 3 minus 8x plus 12. So this can be simplified to 3 times. The two factors of 6, 12, which gives you 8, is x minus 2 times x minus 6. OK, so this is your dy by dx. OK, now let's also find d squared y, the second derivative, d squared y by dx squared. So your second derivative is? Differentiating this, so this is 6x six, six minus 24. So let's factor the 6 out. So you have x minus 4. Okay, now let's go backward. Let's first find the point of inflection. For point of inflection, for point of inflection, your second derivative, d squared y by dx squared, 
is equal to 0. So, let us set this equal to 0. This implies you can say 6 times x minus 4 is equal to 0, which implies you can say dividing both sides by 6, x minus 4 is equal to 0, x minus 4 is equal to 0. So, when x is 4, you have the point of inflection at x is equal to 4. So, when you put y is equal to, uh, to find the y value of y, put it back in the equation. So, let me get a calculator out. Let me go to run and type in, I want to put 4 back in this equation. So, which is bracket 4 cube, I'll put the values in the bracket 4 cube minus what was the equation the equation is, I want to see the equation, so let me drag it. Oops. Okay. Hopefully, yeah, stay there. Minus 12 times 4 squared plus 36 times 4 minus 32. So it's minus 16. So when x is 4, y is minus 16. So that's the point of inflection. So let's plot it. 4 comma negative 16. So 4 comma negative 16 is, this is 4, this is somewhere, yeah, negative 16 is this point. So this is a, uh, this is a point of inflection. So now we need to determine the maximum and the minimum. Okay, for maximum or minimum, for maximum, so let me write maximum first for maximum and minimum. So these are the two tests that you need to do. For maximum, dy by dx is equal to 0. For minimum, dy by dx is equal to 0. This is the common thing for maximum or minimum. For maximum, I'll draw a curve. So this is maximum. For maximum, it's, it's concave down. Down, I remember, like this, your second derivative should be, down means negative, your second derivative has to be less than zero. For minimum, this is concave up. Up means positive, so your second derivative, this is minimum, so your second derivative, this is a test of finding the second derivative, should be greater than zero. So we already know the uh, first derivative. So first let's find the points which is either the maximum or minimum. So we know this is 3 times. So let me write dy by dx should be equal to 0 for maximum or minimum. So which implies 3 times what was the equation? The derivative was 3 times x minus 6, x minus 2 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. So, dividing both sides by 3, I can say x minus 2 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. So, we can say when x is 2, uh, or x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 6, you get the maximum or minimum. So, let's find the corresponding y value by plugging that in the equation. So, let me put 2 here. So, I put the bracket. So, I'll put 2 and delete it. Okay, so this is a smarter way. Put 2 and delete it. Better put 2 once more. 2 and then delete it. So 2 is 0. Okay, that's interesting. So when x is 2, y is 0. That's already we knew. When x is 2, y is 0. We didn't need this. Okay, so let's put. So this is Okay, so this is either, either the maximum or minimum. So let's put 6 here now. In place of 2, uh, let me put 6. Delete. 6. Delete. And 6. Delete. Is minus 32. Okay, so that's interesting. So this is minus 32. So this is the y-intercept. So 6 comma... So let's plot the point. So this is 2 comma 0 
and 6 comma minus 32. By just using common sense, 6 comma minus 32 is here. Yeah. This is the minimum, isn't it? But we'll have to use calculus to show that this is minimum. So this is the point of inflection, this is maximum. So your curve is going to go like this. So this is minimum, so this is maximum, so the curve is going to go like this. And from here, it's going to go up like this. And you know the y-intercept. So you can, you can know this is the maximum and this is the minimum. And then you have to simply go up and join with 8. And then this will pass through the point of inflection. And here we know the y-intercept is. So we can draw the sketch the graph. So this is your y-intercept. Maximum, this is your point of inflection, which is 4 comma negative 16 and this point is negative 6 comma negative 32 and this is 0 comma negative 32 now how will we show by using calculus this is a maximum the second derivative at this point should be less than 0 so let's finally finish it off so What's the second derivative? Your second derivative is 6 times. So this is your second derivative. So let's write the second derivative. d squared y by dx squared is 6 times x minus 2. 6, six times x minus 4, sorry. Not minus 2, x minus 4. So to test whether this is maximum using derivative, we have to find the second derivative, d squared y by dx squared, when x is equal to 2. So if you put 2 in this equation, so this is 6 times 2 minus 4, which is negative 12. And second derivative is maximum. For maximum, the second derivative has to be great, less than 0. So this is your maximum, okay? And for this point, you find the same thing, the second derivative has to be uh, greater than zero. For maximum, it's less than zero. This is less, less than zero when x is equal to six. That's going to be positive. So this is six times, six minus four is two which is 12, which is greater than 0. That means this is your minimum. OK, now I'll show you how you can do this whole thing using a table menu. Now I have copied and pasted this. So just to show you how you can do this, go to table and type in, I've got the equation there. OK, this is the equation. And I've set from, say, 0 to 8 because and then I have copied and pasted. I've taken the screenshot, and this is the values. So let's confirm. So what is the table telling me? When x is 0, y is, so this is your y-intercept. Can you see this is your y-intercept? That's where we started. When x is 2, y is 0, so this is your x-intercept. This is your x-intercept. When x is 2, y is 0. And when x is 8, y is 0. So this is your x-intercept from the table. OK, now for maximum, so let me draw a graph. So maximum, the gradient changes from positive to 0 to negative. So let's go to where our maximum was at 2. Can you see this is a positive gradient? This is 0 and negative. So this point, 2, 0, is the x-intercept and also the maximum. Can you see that from a positive gradient, it becoming 0 and it's negative. That means this is your maximum and the x-intercept. The minimum was 6, comma. For minimum, from a negative gradient, it becomes 0, a positive gradient. Can you see this is a negative gradient to zero, a positive gradient. So this is your this is your minimum. And for point of inflection, what was the point of inflection? It was four negative sixteen. So 
let me cancel this so that point of inflection is very interesting. So for point of inflection, look at look at the four three points around. Uh, sorry, point of inflection was. So let's look at minus three, four, and five. Look at these three points. From negative gradient, this is again negative. All of three, all the three are negative. This you can see this is negative. This is less negative. This is less negative, and this is more negative. From here, from this point, the gradient is increasing. The gradient is, it's more negative. It's more negative. More negative. So from here, so this is an interesting point, 4 comma negative 16, because from a negative 9, you're going to negative 6. This is the lowest gradient that you're getting, and from here, it's increasing. The gradient is increasing. And that's why this is the point of inflection.